Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Hello. Welcome. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Welcome to the STVS Digital Event Series. Today we have five graduate student researchers working with the organizing community of this year's uh, 11th Asia Pacific Regional Conference of the STVS to talk about their research. If you have any questions during the speech, you can put them forward in the chat box or put out in the Q&A time after each speech. The meeting video will be uploaded to the conference website and you can browse it after the meeting. Uh, I will repeat it in the Chinese. 就是说每一个同学的演讲过程当中呢,如果大家有什么疑问, 或者说有什么问题呢，可以直接在聊天记录当中打出来。然后或者呢，直接在这位同学演讲之后呢，进行这个语音交流。然后呢，会议过程当中呢，会一直保持全程的录像，大家如果有什么问题或者有什么感兴
On the ninth lunar day, the rover struggled to explore a localized fresh crater through several short approaching attempts. The well traced imprint left by U22 rovers gave clue to the slippage it experienced. By extracting the trace units, we calculated the slip ratios using such an estimation model. When rejecting from the crater, as the red row shows, the estimated slip ratio is about minus 0.1, consistent with the decreased slope of 3.1 degrees. The aforementioned traverse trajectories and wheel slippage also helped us to infer the soil properties. On one of the transmitted images, we observed that more than 46% of the wheel surface in the figure was covered with large agglomerate of cloudy soils. It is even more interesting when we compared with the U2 rover wheels in the Chang'e 3 mission. Even though, the, even though in the same configuration of wheels, they show absolutely different soil adherent phenomena. On U2 rover wheels, only sticky and fine particles were observed. Similar sharp contrasts were also presented on their mutual shorting images. The fine particles on U2's wheels were most likely due to the electrostatic adherence, but such large pieces of soil on U2's wheels were comparatively unusual. Furthermore, we find similar phenomena on other lunar days, and we think this greater coherence of the soil is regional rather than localized. This increased coherence of the lunar regolith is likely attributed to the higher percentage of agglomerates, which is in proportion with the soil maturity. So it is suspected that the lunar soil at the Chang'e 4 site is more mature than that at the Chang'e 3 site. Although U22 doesn't carry any specific soil parameter identification instruments, the rover wheels can be used as a changing device to identify soil parameters based on the wheel terrain interaction. On the basis of the terra mechanics models, we get to know that in order to infer the bearing and the sharing characteristics of the regoliths, two key wheel states, the wheel sinkage and the wheel slip ratio are needed. From some of the images, we can see that U22 wheels were almost supported by lugs and the wheel rim was visible in contact with the terrain. By image processing, we estimated the wheel sinkage to be 5 to 15 millimeters. According to the terra mechanics models, we predicted the curves reflecting the Wrigley's bearing parameters on the different sinkage. The region within the two purple curves is the bearing parameters of Chang'e 3 site, and the orange region is that of Lunar 17 site. Comparatively, when at the same sinkage exponent, they have a larger equivalent sinkage modulus than that at Chang'e 4 site on average. This means that they are relatively stronger in the bearing strength than that of the Chang'e 4 site. We use the soil parameters derived from Apollo missions as typical values for comparison. Assuming that the equivalent stiffness was typical values of 820, the, sink the sinkage exponent n ranged from 0 0.83 to 1. And when the sinkage exponent was assumed to be 1, the corresponding equivalent stiffness was 814 to 814 to 2800. When both of these two parameters were assumed to be typical values, we can find that the wheel sinkage was about 15.5 millimeters which is larger than the average wheel sinkage we observed. 
This implies that the regolith at the Chang'e 4 site is stronger than the typical lunar soils on Apollo missions. Furthermore, we compared the bearing parameters of the regolith at the Chang'e 4 site to several typical value, typical uh, several types of soils on Earth. It can be seen in the figure C that the lunar regolith is analogs to that of the dry sand and the sandy loam in bearing properties. U22 also carried out in-situ investigations of craters, soil, and the impact craters as assumed in the table. One of the most exciting preparations is to detect an unexpected, unexpected gale-like materials at the crater, crater base. A close focused inspection by entering the crater would be of great scientific value. However, because of the high probability of locomotive failure, the rover was limited for the movement to the crater base from terra mechanics perspective. For crater investigation, if the rover drives down along the steep crater walls, it might be out of control due to sky failure of the wheels. What's more, even if it enters the crater successfully, according to the anti-symmetric slip versus sky me mechanism, the rover will find it difficult to move out. Because of the well, because for a well with skiding, the resistance force is in the same direction as the attractive force. But when a well slips, its resistance force counteracts with the attractive force to decrease the drop -up pull. As a result, even if the rover moves downward and upward along the same slope, its wheels might not be able to obtain enough drop -up pull for climbing back. Different from E22, Zhu Rongma's rover is a robot with an improved active rock buggy suspension. It is more powerful in locomotion and capable of creeping and climbing. It has traversed more than 450 meters on the first 60 souls. Based on the similar locomotive analysis, we find that Zhu Rong rover primarily operates on the mild wheel slippage which is almost lower than 0.2. For the soil on Zhurong landing site, we carried out analysis on both bearing and shearing properties. The characteristic curves are shown as these two figures. The bearing parameters identified are within the rectangle angle shown in figure A, and the inter internal friction angle phi is limited to about 21 to 34 degrees. In comparison to soil, soil parameters of other Mars missions, the soil coherence of Tianwen one site is relatively high, and its in-situ results are closest to that of Viking 1 and the Curiosity sites. Based on the experience in these two missions, to explore in larger scales and a harsher environment, we think more powerful robots with higher intelligence and advanced scientific payloads are needed for future planetary exploration. In the, in the end, we thank our collaborators from the following institutions and all the scientists and engineers who contributed to the Chang'e 4 and the Tianwen 1 missions. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? Uh, great work for you. And do, does anyone have the questions? Uh, hi, Rui Zhou. Here is Yang Zhao. Uh, may I have a question? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, my question is that uh, I see that uh, much works have been done on soil parameter identification and analysis in this work. And I'm interested that uh, has uh, identify, uh, identified soil parameters uh, being used in the real mission? Uh, thank you for your question, Yang Zhao. Mm, 
as far as I know that uh, um, the identified parameters of the uh, Chang'e 4 landing site has, has been used in the simulation of U-22 missions. Uh, some engineers are carrying out uh, works on high fidelity simulations with the identified uh, results. Um, they use the parameters uh, we identified rather than the typical values. Um, and it produced uh, the simulation results to be more actual and close to the uh, real, real, real locomotion. Um, that, that's all. I, I know the, about the uh, impl impl implementation of our works. Okay, thank you, Dr. Rui. My question is over. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, hello? Uh, hello, 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 hello. Uh, well. Okay, I will. I will ask later. Okay. Oh uh, yes, thank you. Uh, hello, uh, Doctor Rui. Uh, my Hi. name is Zhikai. Uh, I want to ask you uh, a question about. Uh, I noticed that there are two very slippage estimation estimation methods used in the locomotion analysis of U two two. Uh, what? Well, one is to use the locomotive data, and another is estimated using wheel trace imprints. What's the difference between these two methods? Thank you. Uh, that's a really good question, and thank you for your question. Um, I want to mention that um, I think what, what you have mentioned is about this, uh, this page. One of our the sleep ratio estimation used is uh, about uh, the is based on the locomotive data. It is used to estimate the sleep ratio between two adjacent waypoint waypoints. That's a quite uh, relatively long uh, distance, usually about uh, more than ten meters. However, the second way that we used to uh, estimate the sleep ratio based on the trace imprint as the picture shows is based on uh, a relatively small distance of of the trace imprint it is a more fine grained result um, there are two aspects of the sleep ratio one is more one is more uh one is for the larger distance and, uh, and this one is more fine grained and uh, i want to mention that uh, in this case because there is no uh, localized visual localization results in this case so that we estimate the sleep ratio uh, in another way that's that's why we use the trace well trace imprints because it also gives us the uh, sleep ratio uh, information. Mm, that, that's all about uh, what I know about uh, the, the difference between these two methods. Uh, well, thank you for your explanation. Uh, that, uh, thank you. Uh, hello. Hello. I heard someone wants to ask a question. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask her now? Yeah. 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 Uh, my question is, uh, uh, uh how the parameters uh, from the from your experiments uh, uh, affecting the design of your wheel? Uh, of the lunar wheels or the Mars uh, rovers. Uh, okay, um, actually, the wheel design is not uh, it, the wheel is not designed by our teams, um, but the uh, 
rain parameters will actually affect affect the locomotion performance of whales when it is on the Mars or the uh, Moon. Mm. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you, Rui. And uh, at the time of limitation, we will go next. The next uh, presenter will be Jian Zhong, Mr. Jian Zhong Zhu. He is a PhD student at the Vico Thermomechanics Group of the State Laboratory for Bionics Engineering of Education Ministry at Jilin University. He will present his work, Design and Experimental Study on the Metal Flexible Wheel for Pressurized Lunar Rover. Hello, Jian Zhong, it is your screen. Hello. Uh, thanks for Dr. Yang's kind introduction. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Jian Zhongzhu. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the Vico Time Mechanics Group of Jilin University. And my advisor is Professor Meng Zhou. And uh, today I'm going to talk about some of my thesis work, which is design and uh, experimental study on the metal flexible view for pressurized lunar rover. The presentation will uh, is given by five parts. Uh, so to start off with, we I would like to introduce my uh, the motivation of our projects. As we know, China has successfully uh, implemented unmanned lunar rover uh, in the next stage of the lunar exploration. China will carry out manned exploration and uh, establish a lunar base. For short range missions, astronauts can use space suits and the traditional non pressurized lunar rover. For long duration and long distance missions, a rover uh, with a pressurized carbon is needed to ensure the comfort and the safety of astronauts. The difference between the two types of rover is whether they have a pressurized carbon, which means the mass of rover uh, is different. For the Pressurized rover, the mass would uh, reach several tons. This is a big challenge for the mobility performance of the rover. We see that the wheeled rover is the most common platform for planetary rovers uh, due to its uh, mature technology and high reliability. As a port directly in contact with the planet surface, the wheel has a function of driving, steering, and braking. And the, it is the key part that affects the mobility performance. In addition, due to the uh, unique environment, such as high temperature variation, vacuum, and strong radiation, uh, the rubber tires cannot be used. Therefore, uh, metal wheels are widely used. For unmanned rovers, rigid wheels are usually used. While well, for manned rovers, flexible wheels, uh, should be used to improve red comforts, such as the uh, very, very much view of the US IRV lunar rover. So that is the uh, motivation of our projects. Some of the findings from the literature help us to identify the, the areas we should focus on to improve the mobility and the red comfort of the pressurized rover. The views of the Existing planetary rovers are mostly rigid views. We have not really considered the red comfort uh, of the planetary rover. And uh, although some research has touched on the metal flexible views, it's only for light rovers and cannot be applied to pressurized lunar rover. Uh, in addition, the advantages of metal flexible views in vibration reduction have not been quantitatively studied. Based on the uh, literature appreciation, 
we came up with a research plan on this topic. We want to develop a new uh, metal flexible view for the pressurized lunar rover. Therefore, we propose a new concept of a metal flexible view with single rim and the twin cactus. Uh, how to ensure that the view uh, met the strength requirements and provides good red comfort at the same time is a great challenge in a flexible view design. So we utilize finite element method to optimize the view structure. Uh, that is uh, the part one. Then after finishing the uh, view fabrication, we test the mechanical behavior and the mobility performance of the flexible view. The last part, we want to establish the view soil interaction model uh, to predict the mobility performance. Uh, these are the two uh, flexible concepts. On the left, you can see the concept number one. The main structure includes view surface, rigid rim, and the elastic uh, element. In this concept, the view surface is a thin walled cylindrical structure, and the deformation of the view depends uh, mainly on the elastic elements. The main structure of concept number uh, number two consists of structure of uh, concept number two consists of uh, elastic carcass and uh, uh, a rigid rim. The carcass configuration is similar to that of a rubber pneumatic tear. In order to achieve elastic deformation, the carcass uh, should be discretized. Uh, this concept has a good terrain adaptability and a good red comfort. Therefore, we choose concept number two for the detailed design. For structural design, we propose a twin carcass design to improve the load bearing capacity and the redundancy of the flexible view. The carcasses were made of springs due to provide sufficient uh, elasticity. The rigid rim was uh, all made of aluminum alloys. We want the rim to be as light as possible and the premise of meeting the strength uh, requirements. So the hollow out structure is adopted. In addition, uh, to improve the strength and traction performance of the view, we designed an X-shaped head. Uh, in addition to supporting the weight of the lunar rover, the flexible view also needs to uh, withstand the thrust developed by the lunar soil. Also, the flexible view uh, also bears significant impact force when the lunar rover traverses a, a rough terrain. To evaluate the mechanical performance of the flexible view, finite element analysis was used to simulate the, the uh, bow forces. And then the dimension of the flexible view was optimized based on the simulation results. To verify the supporting uh, capability of the view, a uh, vertical load test was performed. Uh, with the hydraulic test machine, the results showed that the maximum load carrying capacity reached 20,000 newton, 2.7 times of the rated load. The average stiffness of the three tests uh, under rated load is 296.1 newton per millimeter. So in terms of testing the flexible view, uh, we adopted the soybean test to evaluate the mobility performance. To achieve this, we uh, designed the soybean test system. Before uh, each test, we prepare the lunar soil simulant, uh, set the load, uh, speed, etc. We adjust the drop pool to obtain a different slip ratio. After finishing the test, we record the test results, such as the sinkage global pool. Uh, the mobility performance test is the work we are currently working on. Uh, the completed part mainly includes the uh, effect of penetration and re resistance on the traction performance. And uh, uh, from the red Figure we saw the penetration re resistance of lunar soil simulant have significantly effect on uh, sinkage and the dropper pool. After we finish some experiments, we want to establish the mathematical model of the view soil interaction to predict the mobility performance. 
before this, the first thing we need to do is uh, to measure the tire mechanics parameter in the lunar soil simulant. To do this, we first design the uh, biometer uh, using two circular plates to narrow syncate expo uh, exponent uh, cohesive modulus and the friction modulus. And they use the annular shear plate to mirror the shear modulus to predict the mobility performance of the flexible view. We use the Baker's and the Genesis equation to establish the view soil model to calculate the driving resistance, thrust, and the drawback pool. For flexible views, we introduce the load deformation equation into the geometric relation of the view soil inter uh, interface to solve this model. So uh, this brings me to the end of the presentation. I'd like to uh, say that we, what we have done so far lays the foundation for our future work. We still have a lot of work to do and I'm uh, hoping to find the effect of load speed view size on the traction performance through soybean tests. Uh, in addition, I'm uh, going to add uh, wheel deformation and uh, gravity effect to mobility performance evaluation. And uh, finally, we are hoping to examine the vibration characteristics of flexible wheel to improve the red comfort. Okay, so this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Uh, hello, Dr. Zhu. Uh, I got a question. Uh, I I want to know during the experiment, uh, how could you control the load on the wires and the slip rate? Uh, okay. Well, uh, okay. Uh, I will have. Uh, Or this? Uh, uh, no, the next, the this next slide? Uh, experiment. Right. This, this slide. Uh, yes, yes, this slide. Uh, well, uh, in in this picture, uh, we we can see that the uh, flexible view uh, is mounted on the uh, main frame, and uh, on the uh, main frame there is a platform uh, that we can uh, place the uh, counterweight. Uh, so we can adjust the wheel load by adjusting the counterweight, uh, then the wheel load will uh, be adjusted. Uh, for slip tree shoe uh, adjustment, uh, a rope uh, is a rope is uh, set on our test bed. On one end of the rope is connected to the test bed, and uh, the other end of uh, the rope is connected to a loading device, uh, which is the device on the right of the uh, picture. By adjusting the loading device, uh, different slip ratio, uh, a different uh, pulling force is obtained, so that so to obtain uh, a different uh, slip ratio. Uh, okay, thank you. Thanks for your question. Hello, hello. Hello, Dr. Zhu. Uh, I want to ask hello. a question. Uh, in your future work, you mentioned that you want to aid the deformation effect on uh, mobility performance. Uh, so what what are you going to do? Thank you. OK. So for uh, view deformation, we plan to utilize uh, a uh, simulation method to uh, to uh, add the view deformation effect on uh, the mobility performance evaluation. Since uh, uh, the carcass of the flexible view is, is discrete, and it's difficult to fabricate a, a rigid view uh, with the same shape uh, as the flexible view. 
So uh, it's difficult to evaluate the deformation effect on traction performance through a soybean test. Uh, so I think uh, maybe the uh, simulation method is a good choice. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Hey, yes, uh, I have one question. Uh, if we go back to slide 10, yes, here, um, I see it's a hollow structure. And um, uh, so what will happen if the, if such a tire, uh, it's a, I call it tire, but it's not a real tire. If it's a, go on a rover and then there were some some stones and they stuck in between because you have the hollow structure and then that would become a problem so what do you think you can solve it because of this design uh well that's a good question uh, maybe we can see this uh picture uh we have a uh, x-shaped thread uh maybe the uh it's 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 a little different uh, from that uh, the slide 10 uh now we have a x shaped thread uh maybe a bigger uh, stone or uh the bigger stone maybe cannot uh, get into the uh the space between the two two thread uh if if the soil or a uh, smaller stones get into the get into the the the, the, the gap uh, flexible wheel uh yeah yeah it's uh it's really uh a question we should uh, <laughs> solve mm -hmm. yeah if you go to the test rig slide 11. 11. Uh, yes, this so one? here, yeah. yes, here I see instead of hollow, and it seems you have something rigid uh, inside. Is that uh, rubber or something for the test uh, on the test rig? No. In the uh... left, in the left bottom, yes. It seems it's not hollow, right? Uh, uh, sorry, that you put it. It seems it's not hollow structure. It's something solid in between. Uh, I see on the, on the, on the tire is something solid, isn't it? No, no. Oh, it, no. Okay. No. Okay. So here, how big is the? I don't know how big is the vertical load you have and how big is the friction coefficient you do the test uh about uh, seven thousand seven uh, newton. newton yeah okay seven thousand and then the friction coefficient could be quite low if i look at the drawbar pool it's just about one kilonewton mm -hmm. in that case the friction coefficient is about open how much is quite low mm -hmm. right so it's one one over seven, isn't it? Pardon? So I see here you said the vertical load, the axle load applied is seven kilonewton, and then the draw bar pull is maximum yeah. is around one kilonewton, and uh, this work at slip ratio is almost quite high, it's almost uh, full slip, and then I expect the friction coefficient. In between the surface is quite low, isn't it? Are you mean this picture, right? Yes. Yeah. This the the wheel load. Uh, well, this test is about uh, uh, four thousand. Uh, I mean the maximum uh, wheel load is seven thousand uh, newton. For this picture. Is four thousand. Yeah, since this test, and you are going to investigate the 
interaction between the tire and then the test rig, right? And then so you want yeah. to simulate basically the tire and terrain interaction. And mm -hmm. how would you simulate the friction coefficient here on the test rig? How do you set it? Is that using a sandpaper to do the test or something else? And how big is the friction coefficient? Because I see here this hollow structure would get a quite, quite, quite big friction coefficient, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, it's big. So if it is big and it's more or less one, and then expect you will get a really high draw bar pool. It's as high as probably the axle load, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here it's quite low. And what does that mean? Uh, yeah, maybe the uh, tra uh, traffic efficiency is uh, uh, in a lower level. All right, thanks. Thank you for your question. Uh, uh, Dr. Zhu, thanks for your report. And I have a question. Uh, can you mm -hmm. tell us how is the distance between the spring steel sheets around the wheel design? Will it significantly affect the traction force or side force on the wheels, or more aims to reduce weight? Sorry, what is uh, it? It's the, the distance between the spring steel sheets around the wheel design. How? Mm -hmm. Spring steel, right? Yeah. How is oh. this design? Will it affect the traction force or side force? Uh, actually, I <laughs> didn't uh, investigate about the material effect on the traction performance. Maybe uh, I will work on this in our future work. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I have a very short question. Uh, so when you calculate the sinkage, uh, did you extract the wheel deformation? Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, can you go to page 11? OK, so because like for uh, this soft wheel, you have a large uh, contact area, right? So in theory, yeah. your sinkage, your actual sinkage, uh, uh, like the sinkage into the terrain, or the terrain deformation will be smaller, but in your case, it's larger. So I uh, so I assume, or you might, uh, so have you ever extracted the wheel deformation because the wheel is deformable, right? It's soft wheel. Uh, in my uh, mathematical model, I uh, uh, take into consideration about the wheel deformation, uh, uh, however, uh, I in my uh, soybean test, uh, uh, I didn't uh, mirror the, the actual uh, wheel deformation to uh, to. So yeah, uh, so in this case, uh, your left figure, right, in the the sinkage plot you have mm -hmm. will be a combination of both the uh, deformation of the wheel and the terrain. So it's not the sinkage we. Well, uh, typically assume for a rigid wheel, right? So, uh, because like for rigid, uh, for for a soft wheel, uh, you have a larger contact area, so the pressure will be smaller, right? So you have a smaller deformation for the train. Oh, sorry. Uh, maybe there's a little uh confusion. This figure is uh, about the soft terrain and the compact uh, terrain. Uh. That is the two uh, uh, experiment uh, experiment condition. Oh, uh, it's not okay. uh, it's not the uh, soft view and uh, rigid view. Okay, I see, I see. So two types of soil, right? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that Thank makes you. sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Zhu. As a time limitation, mm -hmm. uh, we will go on for the next uh, uh, student. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Doctor Who, you can go on. Hello, Mr. Inbai Hu. I think you didn't uh, open your voice. Yeah. Okay, okay, good, good. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Just play my topic a little bit different. Terran is a hero optimization control for observable robot. It's just a connection with our Corona 19. So, yeah, so let's go ahead. Okay, this is uh, outlined the uh, background, system overview, design, operation, modeling, much plan, and department. Uh, yes, the background thing I want to know is the uh, corona is uh, widely spread around the world and uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's ongoing global pandemics and uh, yes, there are, are caught many or don't, I think there are uh, deaths and uh, yeah, some confusion case and the medical staff infection and uh, yes, yeah, so all long, long time, I think more than two years. So. Here I just uh, it's the background thing. Uh, yeah, it's Corona nineteen. So we go to this. Uh, this topic is just about the uh, exploration about the robot and how to con uh, connect robot to the Corona nineteen and how to use the robot solution to address the uh, yeah the medical problem. Okay, this uh yeah, there's some robot solution. The first one is the Yes, yeah, so the Young Institute of Automation, there is a three equal freedoms, neural arm, target version, force sensing. And the second one is Denmark, just the left line robots, some um, something in Joshua and the uh, 3D print part, the full automatic vision system. And uh, we are also, yeah, we at Tsinghua University also developed some three, I guess, motion platform automatic. So that is good. Because robot is a promised technology to have the observable sampling, for example, because the lowest consumption, high accuracy, and uh, convenient for large scale department and the uh, oversampling generation of observable robot. So it can speed up the sampling process because human need the uh, wrist and uh, can free up the medical staff the hand. So it just robot do it. We can yeah. We just the medical staff can just. Uh, City in the room and uh, yeah, so uh, there's other, other solution is a sampling collection uh, protection tool. For example, here is fin fingers, fatigue limitation solution. And uh, yes, it's, but it's, it's simply, yeah, it's the process is simply, but it's the yeah, infection risk and the work increase. So it's very need more medical staff just to uh, yeah, focus on the uh, sampling task. For example, the Shanghai is the case in, I think, the two, last two months. Okay, so what's the challenge for the office uh, sampling robot? The first one is difficulty to ensure the safety. The first one is most important. Second one is insufficient reliability of the robot because when we yeah, safety is fine, but when but you just uh, sampling the uh, the warranty of, for example, the uh the pensions. So it's important just the the collection quality is uh is, is important because we should do make sure if uh the sampling is is good, it's in uh the everything is uh, is enough. So and uh, the fourth is the robot are uh, less infections than manual because the manual in you know, a human is really fast. I think the five seconds is good, uh, is enough. But for a robot, just follow detection and uh, yeah, uh, just uh, moving and then sampling. So it's a long, it's a long time. Okay, system overview, higher redundance. Uh, so it's our systems the. Uh, uh, overview, high redundant, uh, rigid, uh, flexible, uh, uh, coping the robot is, uh, is because it's mean this part is the uh, UFI, is a uh, rigid robot, and this part is a uh, software robot. So we connect together because it's better just, uh, because, uh, you know, the software robot is difficult to control, but rigid robot is really difficult, uh, is really dangerous for because our robot, the robot should go through our our mouse and the sampling, so we should make everything 
uh, is soft. I think it's comfortable and and uh, safety. We have the yeah three D grid freedom. Uh, developer manipulate linear motor servers motor. Uh, the most important part here is uh, uh micro your micro actuate is this part and the three D U R five robot arm. And uh, just go deep the camera and the uh, force sensing system. So it's a design and modeling and the uh, fabrication of a uh, micro pneumatical actuator. It's uh, it's design is a champion and it's covered combined together. And uh, yeah, to a single deal for it MPA. And the air pressure is controlled because uh, uh, it's by the air force pressures. So so we should get the uh yeah get the relationship from the uh because of the air force and uh, the yeah degree the moving yes what and uh, this is a uh, four kinematic MPA. um yes this is a uh, uh yeah so next up uh, it's a force sensing force sense design is a force sensing solution and the uh, can you help me? I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not sure, yeah, because it's a long time, I don't, I don't know, it's okay, just, uh, can you help me? Hello? Okay, mm. uh, hello, hello? Uh, 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 is, uh, is, is, can you help me? Yeah, 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 any problem? Okay, okay, maybe, okay, okay, go ahead, okay. Uh, it's a force sensing and uh, it's a string gauge sensor. It's developed by ourselves, so it's uh, attached to here. So once the uh, uh, deforms, uh, deforms of the here, then we can get uh, calculate the uh, force. So it's because here we need to know the relationship between the voltage and uh, the force. So we just uh, calibration the force and relationship. You see the linear uh, relationship uh, shown here. So we get the uh, just do many import, uh, to get data and just a uh, regression. Okay, this is the control farmer work. Control farmer is, uh, we have three parts, the vision recognition and location and the motion plan control and planning. And third part is a task execution and feedback. From here, we, for example, yeah, because we, uh, we need to know the sampling, uh, place. For example, the tonsil and the pilot uh, place here, because some other place is, uh, uh, useless. So, uh, uh, I think you do the PCR test, you never know which place better. So, and uh, we should make sure we should detect the mouse the center because we we should know uh robot motion planning. We should know the constraint is here and then which part which uh which point you know for example we pass through our mouse and to here. So we need constraint here. So detection part and the second one is the control task if the because we should uh, consider sampling task uh, and the uh, physical limit, for example, the velocity acceleration limit and, uh, and the constraint. constraints mean here, uh, I, for example, I call here is oral center cardio constraint is here and the force sensing because we need to consider the force feedback. If the force uh, ex exceed our maximum sampling force is dangerous, so we should stop the robot and uh, Maybe go back to the initial position. Uh, if the robot's sampling force is uh, it's good range, I think it's it's uh, it's a good sampling uh, process. Okay, so good, nice. Okay, this is a manipulate kinematic model with the constraint. This is a uh, yeah. As this is a uh, uh, Jacobian uh, yeah Jacobian equation, and this is a uh, uh, position and velocity constraint, and uh, here is the uh, Okay, original problem, but sec and the second constraint is here because we want this uh this link is constrained to uh this point just uh, go inside. So we should uh, make sure our work is the uh, safety because for example this link just uh, uh pass through the uh this uh yeah this point this point and go inside maybe yeah safety and then we design everything together just uh, combine the construct uh, optimization model. And uh, yeah, just uh, get the optimization um, finally the problem. So okay, this is our model, and uh, this is a new network design. So we use a uh, very new new network, uh, very new network. We combine all the 
we combine all the uh, matrix together. For example, this is the uh, this is the tricking task. Uh, this is the uh, uh, constraint. Uh, this uh, manipulability and uh, this is the constraint together. Just the uh, uh, project uh, uh, operate, and this is our uh, decision uh, variable. So we just we form the residual arrow and uh, uh, just from the from the KT condition and then get the um, yeah get the uh, residual arrow model together and then just finally get the, the optimization problem. So it's a tradition method and uh, this is a tradition method and this our method is a little bit different. Just uh, but this uh, converges uh, explain, uh, exponential uh, financial uh, converge. It's better than the traditional way. And this is a demonstration with the phantom experiment. We can see the video. First time we should do the experiment with the phantom because the safety and then we transfer to the volunteer and then to the real case. Okay. There is a sampling case here. And the robot running more uh, performance shall, uh, should guarantee the ops, uh, constraint just from here. here. Okay, I just uh, mentioned the uh, yeah, we go and then so we go the next head is the volunteer. We just uh, conduct twenty nine volunteer, and uh, yes, we can go ahead for the well, yeah, yeah, maybe faster. Okay, yeah, moving and then calibration. Just only this part we just uh, close to our sampling place. Then we store the uh UR file and just control the soft part. Okay. So this is the safety for our uh, sampling process. Okay. We have to, yeah, it's so another uh, volunteer, yeah, second volunteer. Okay. Okay, this is a tricking result. It's our control results. Uh, yeah, from here, I think the compiled result is the converging uh, faster than the traditional method. So, yeah, we probably go ahead quickly, yeah. So it's uh the most important I think the uh everyone want to know is the combine with our manual way from the P uh uh PCR test. This is from our we we just do this test from the uh hospital and uh, we sampling with a robot and uh, with a manual way and uh, get the result. And uh, yeah, thank you. So, thank you, Doctor Wu, an excellent uh, job. Uh, does anyone has a problem or questions? Yeah, anyone have problem or any question? Yeah. Hello, Doctor Wu. Mm, can you hear me? Oh, uh, no problem. Yes. Thanks for your presentation. I want to ask a question. Uh, I wonder how to understand the hierarchical framework of optimization control problem. Are they solved in a single optimization problem to fulfill all the targets at one time, or do you have to solve your optimization problem sequence with predetermined target priorities to fulfill uh, different targets? Okay, okay. Uh, yes, here we just uh, we combine all the tasks into uh, uh, one object function because you know, uh, because I also do another uh, some topic about the multi objection optimization. So it's separate different matrices uh, and with different uh, object function together. But this is the evolution strategy is a little different, it's uh, complex because you know, for the real robot, we should comp uh, we should comp uh, consider real time performance. So, our uh, converse optimization is the solution. So, why is this is um, our motivation combine all the metrics together. Because, for example, here this is a, uh, I mean, this is a tracking. For example, the tracking place for maybe the under effect we tracking some trick to rate. Here is a constraint. Uh, so we should guarantee a constraint. Constraint is another uh, task because we should, uh, for example, pass for example, pass through a ring and then from the ring to an. Uh, uh, the anti factor just do some task. The second one is, uh, is this is uh, avoidance singularity. So 
you combine the three tasks together, but with different weights here, uh, you should only one, two, and zero. So we can just, uh, we should design the different weights and then different weights just uh, uh, is a priority. So it's our hierarchical structure. Okay, thanks for your answer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yin Man Hu. And uh, uh, do we have any questions? Okay, let's go the next. Okay, I will stop. Okay. The next student is Shi Peng Li. He is currently purchasing his master degree in electronic science and technology at the Southern University of Science and Technology. He will talk about robot path planning with motion uncertainty over deformable slopes. Okay. Mr. Li. You can start anytime. I think you didn't open your microphone. Okay. You, you hear me nearly? Yes, yes, yes. You can start. Okay. Anytime. Hello, everyone. Thanks for listening to this seminar. I'm Lu Shibong from Sas Tech, a um, master's student. And my advisor is Professor Jia Denzhong. Today, I will show my research of robot mobility and over deformable slopes. Uh, <clears throat> Such terrain is an uh, inevitable challenge for outdoor robots. And for example, the target area of the curiosity robot is the uh, Ocalo, um, which is for, which is formed by uh, formed by soft slopes, sleeping and uh, uh, sleeping and sinking are two common phenomena during the robot moments. Uh, this this phenomenon would uh, cause significant motion uncertainty, and that and uh, that is the reason why it is so challenging for robot mobility on subterrain. Uh, to, uh, to overcome those challenges, uh, lots of research have been done. Firstly, we analyze the robot design. The history of robot design is the process of suspension development. Uh, nowadays, the leg system are introduced. Uh, the leg system are introduced to the soft terrain. Uh, the leg system could also be thought as as one kind of spatial suspension, and there is, has been a hurt important in contemporary contemporary research. Mm, besides uh, the robust design, the information of soft of soft terrain is another important factor for robot mobility. Uh, muscles based on machine learning is popular. And they also use the muscle to estimate the terrain uh, information such as sleep and uh, sinkage, uh, as these people should. And based on those uh, uh, machine learning or, uh, uh, or parameters or, inform or soil information or parameters, um, we can we can estimate we can estimate the robot's mobility through the robot's terrain interaction interaction models. Uh, some approaches are provided in these people. Uh, yeah. Uh, here is my recent researchers, and I will show you the part two and the part four in detail. That is to say, um, we will talk about the con class parameter Hello. estimation. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 okay. Okay. Mm. I will talk about the uh, contact parameters estimation and the past planning. 
。那我重新。OK， 谢谢。Okay, Mr. Lee. It's all okay. I will. I will follow my uh talk. Um, this this uh, uh this slide shows the context experiment. Uh, it's an overview of the uh of the con context expression problems. Uh, which is shown in the in this in the sliders. After deflation of as a deflation of full boss slip edge at different uh if their motion mode are changed, such as the where uh, the slip the slip edge of where robots is distance and is a ratio for uh where the robots. Uh, we provide an so to solve these problems, we provide a unified contact parameters to uh, describe the contact contact process for hybrid robots. There, uh, uh, there we consider three basic motion modes, including 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 the vehicle modes and the two working modes. Uh, for for each motion mode, so we develop the, the interaction process into two status and uh, um, and uh, three and three important points and based on those based on those. Um, Based on, based on those assumptions, we give our deflation of sinkage and uh, slip edge. Our deflation is equivalent to other um, common deflations, such as the uh, rail, the rubble, the, uh, the slip edge deflation of rubble. We can transform to that condition. That condition. Mm. Uh, to keep the motion of testing model in control, we respect the supporting force of the testing module during the experiments. And uh, what's more, we we choice uh, we choice the working gauge for force motion mode and the vehicle gauge for wear mode wear mode wear motion mode. During during the during each experiments, we draw the test module to finish the entire uh, entire motion gauge. The initial based on based on this algorithm, initial the initial pass is. Uh, this and the real path is different from the initial path because we, during the moments, uh, we contact with the substrate. Uh, in the contact parameter, in, in the contact, contact parameter uh, data set, we can like to the first talk and MU singlers to estimate the contact parameters. Uh, to process uh, this process, including uh, segmentation, segmentation, um, feature instruction, and uh, data regrouping, and then we use the CN to handle the uh, uh, estimation problem process. Uh, this the difficulty is the difficulty is how to um, extract, uh, segment the contact signals through the uh, through the entire entire signals. Uh, for us, for us, we think uh, the RSTM is a suitable option to solve this problem. Mm. Uh, this, as this slide is shown, it's obvious that uh, to say it's obvious to see that the distribution of the contacts of the contact parameters is related to uh, terrain types and slope angle, heating angle, and the other uh, other motion conditions. Um, uh, uh, this people show the prediction accuracy of uh, our CN based muscle. Uh, its, uh, its performance is pretty good, which is better than uh, ninety six percent. Then we then based on the uh, preparation about 
we try to plan we try to plan the path to hybrid robot robotics. Uh, as discussed in the background part, so we consider the most uncertainty in this in this process. Uh, at first, we define the most uncertainty. The uncertainty is uh, represented by the uh, difference between the uh, real location and the target and the target location of the moments. We assume that the uh, distribution of the uncertainty uh, is a normal distribution. Uh, so that uh, it will be easier for our uh, for our to to handle the to make the modeling and uh, solve the solve the uh, solve the this problem. We also we proposed a method a method for parameters calculation. Um, parameter calculation uh, is different is uh, its purpose. Uh, this method is different for wear modes and uh, force mode. Uh, all the parameters could be calculated based on the context data sets we measured uh, before. Uh, the, um, there, uh, we'll give you an example. Uh, this table shows the part shows the part of motion uncertainty parameters. What you should know is that the heading angle is zero and the slope angle is five degrees. We plan the path of hybrid robots on soft on soft terrain according to the algorithm. Some constraints are required to keep the path with huge sinkage and, and slippage out of the out, out of the planning. Uh, those parameters such as the S threshold are uh, data safe. Uh, we uh, there is a there is a problem for the path planning. That is the control parameters uh, such as uh, control par 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 parameters such as the heading angle in our data set is uh, discrete. But we need a but we need a continuous way for our planning problems. Mm, then we provide the two uh, two solutions. One is based on machine learning, and the other is based on the interpol interpolation. Uh, for us, we use the learning. Learning methods, uh, learning methods uh, based on CNN, uh, because uh, these methods uh, have already been trained during the contact parameter contact parameter estimation process. Uh, there we should uh, we uh, yeah we should plan the path for three motion modes here. It's obvious that the path is affected by uh, by the robot motion modes. Uh, such as the drawing wear mode, or locked wear mode, or planned force mode. Mm. Uh, we also, uh, for, uh, for certain for certain motion mode, we can select the suitable control parameters such as uh, data safe and uh, as, um, uh, access threshold to choice uh, suitable to adjust the uh, path and choice and choose a uh, suitable. Mm, uh, planning the uh, suitable path for location. Uh, this improved uh, improve the in, in application of our of our planning algorithm. Uh, that's uh, okay. That's all the thing I want to show you. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Mr. Shipongli. Excellent uh, job. And uh, any questions? Uh, uh, hi, Doctor Li. Uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can uh, hear. Uh, well, my question is: the uh, uh, six-axis contact signal is one-dimensional data, and the CNN is generally used to extract emerged features. Uh, what measure do you use to analyze the contact signal? Uh, I think uh, you are curious about uh, this process uh, for to to select to select the uh, singular the singular feature. Uh, so um, uh, we use we use the DW, we use the DW two to. Um, 
this um, to to deal with the is this original signals and then we um, and then we choice and we choice the uh, db4 wavelet wavelet to for condition Okay. 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 Thank you. I have one question. Sorry. Um. How about energy consumption of these two? One is a wheel foot, and another one is planar foot. And the planar foot looks we will consume more energy compared with the wheel foot, isn't it? I think you voice to be... Uh... Too low? My voice is too low. Can you hear me? Uh, okay, okay, no, I okay, okay. Uh, my question is, uh, for the wheel foot uh, mm. and the planner foot, and mm. these two, uh, what about the energy consumption? And as far as I can estimate, the wheel foot looks can be energy efficient more than the planner foot because the planner foot seems, well, you have quite big contact area, right? So everywhere is in contact and you consume more energy. How about that? What would be your opinion and how would you comment on that? Uh, there we just uh, we just we just uh, uh, want to we just want to uh, estimate the uh, the connect connect param parameters for uh, different different motion modes that we don't uh, don't consider consider the energy consumption. Um, okay, I see. It's a good question for uh, it's a good question so to to to. Exploration, good questions to do, and I will do is in the future work. In the future, yeah, thanks. Thank you, thank you. Do we have any questions? Okay, thank you, Shipong Li. And, uh, uh, we will go to the next and the last uh, graduate uh, student researchers. Are you sure? Uh, Mr. Zheng Yin Wang, he is currently purchasing the PhD degree in Aeronautical and Astronautical Science and Technology in Harbin Institute of Technology. His topic is the wheels performance of Mars exploration rovers, experimental study from the perspective of thermomechanics and structural mechanics. And I'll give you the screen, Mr. Wang. Okay, I will show that. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. You can start at any time. Hello, everyone. I'm Zheng Yi Wang. Thanks for the introduction of Dr. Yang. Today, I'm going to talk about the wheels performance of Mars Exploration Rovers, experimental study from the perspective of terrain mechanics and structural mechanics. Nowadays, various countries are actively conducting Mars exploration, and the first Mars rover of China, Zhu Rong, has landed on Mars in 2021. <clears throat> in this presentation, I will introduce in seven sections as follows. The relevant research has been published on Journal of Terra Mechanics. Mars is the planet closest to the Earth's 
Earth's environment in the solar system. Exploring Mars is useful for identifying the origin of planet life and the potential habitat of humanity in the future. Wild mobility robotics is one of the most important tools to explore Martin surface. However, the soil on the Martin surface may collapse and cause the wheel to become stuck. In 2009, the spread Mars rover sank into loose soil when driving on the hills. Because of the soil was too loose, it couldn't provide enough traction for the vehicle to leave, and the wheel was nearly completely Com completely sleeping. Besides the distribution of rocks and other obstacles on the Martin surface may damage the wheel. In 2012, the Curiosity rover landed on the Gaelic crater. The, the mud ground was harder than expected. A large number of indentations and cracks appeared on the wheel surface which consumed about 30% of the real life by 2016. As the interaction compo component of Mars rover and Martin surface, wheels should be tested from the perspective of terra mechanics and the structural mechanics. The active suspension has been ado adopted on China's Mars rover, Zhu Rong. The wheel stop the wheel step locomotion can extricate, can extricate the rover from difficult situations such as climbing steep slopes and escaping from stuck. As shown in the anim animation, high slip and skid will occur during the wheel step locomotion. What's more, the locomotion will change the location of the center of mass, so some wheel load will increase. According to the characters mentioned above, a specific wheel test should be done. Before the test, the evolution indices should be confirmed. The finger on the right shows the force and the torque exert on a, a driving wheel. In fact, term mechanics establishes the relationship between a wheel sinkage running state and its force. So the important evolution per, per, Parameters include the wheel sinkage, uh, driving torque, and drawbar pull. The, thing, the figure on the right shows the force, forces and the torques ex exerted on a driving wheel by the saw vehicle body and the driving motor. The force uh, acting on, uh, on the wheels are related to the wheel's radial st stiffness, axial stiffness, torsional stiffness, stiffness and uh, deflection stiffness. In view of the proposed evolution indices, this section will set up terra mechanics experiments. The terra mechanics experiments include sleep test, complete skate test, and the in-suit steering test. Uh, the virtual in interaction test system as shown in top left, was used to measure the wheel sinkage and the related force, forces and the torques. Uh, two wheels in our experiments are made into different materials. The physical and the mechanical properties of soil simulants are, present, are presented in the middle table. Uh, there is a, a experimental video I'm going to play it. Bear with me. Any problem? Uh, wait a minute. Yes. Uh, the, yeah, you can see the test includes uh, three sections. Uh, this is a uh, uh, sleep condition. Uh, and, it's a higher sleep uh, when the sleep ratio uh, equals uh, 0.7. Mm. Uh, and this section is the. Uh, uh, wait a minute. And this section is the complete skid condition. Uh, the wheel has no rotation. 
Uh, and uh, finally, this is the uh, institute steering condition. Yeah. Uh, besides, we also uh, compared the influence of materials, vertical load, and the driving velocity, and so on. Yeah, this video is on YouTube, uh, and the link attached attached uh, on the article. Uh, okay, I will continue. Mm. Uh, through the test, it is found it is found that the effect of the driving speed on the test results does not exceed ten percent. It indicates that the driving speed has no influence on wheels performance under low speed. We conducted the test with vertical load from 186 to 558 Newton. The performance indices are a linear function of the vertical load, and they can be fitted with linear equations. And for the influence of slip ratio, the traction ability of the wheel will increase, increase with the slip ratio, but it will cause a severe increase in wheel sinkage, especially under heavy load and higher slip. The fingers show the smallest date of the wheel sinkage, driving torque, drawbar pull, and drawbar pull co coefficient versus distance with the different vertical load. There are three main features. Firstly, uh, the driving torque and the drawbar pull are both negative. Secondly, absolute value of wheel sinkage, drawbar pull, and driving torque increase with the vertical load. Finally, the wheel sinkage and the driving torque in, complete, in complete, uh, skid conditions are similar to those with the slip ratio equals to 0.5 to 0.7 under the, under the slip condition. As for in suit steering, it can be found that the average value of the steering torque at the same steering angle is basically the same. As the steering angle increases, the wheel sinkage increase, increases con continuously, and the wheel sinkage increase with the vertical load. Uh, this section will set up structural mechanics experiments. The structural mechanics me uh, mechanical uh, tests include uh, radial, axial, uh, torsional, and uh, deflection stiffness tests. Uh, the top two fingers show the curves of wheels deformation and the normal force and the lateral force corresponding to the uh, radial and uh, axial stiffness. It can be seen that the curve can be divided into uh, two linear segments and one dis displacement. Mutant segments. The bottom two fingers show the curves of wheels deformation and the normal force and the lateral force corresponding to the um, torsional and the deflection stiffness. It can be seen that the deformation uh, linear function of a moment. Uh, there are three main conclusions. Uh, firstly, in the steep condition, the performance indices are. Uh, linear functions of the vertical load. Uh, secondly, in the complete skid condition, the absolute value of wheel sinkage and the driving torque in this situation are similar to those when the slip ratio is among 0.5 to 0.7. Uh, Drawbar pull is negative and the absolute value is much greater than that in slip condition. Finally, the experimental results of the structural mechanics show that there are deformation mutations in the radial and uh, axial stiffness test, and uh, it is uh, speculated uh, caused, caused by the deformation of uh, spokes. Uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, okay, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Zheng Yun Wang. And uh, any questions? Hello, hello. Can uh, you hello. hear me? Uh, yeah. Thanks for your great presentation, Mr. Wang. 
uh, I want to know whether the wealth in your study is similar to Zhu Rongma's rivers well. Okay. Uh, thanks for your question. Um, the wells uh, in this study are the prototype of Zhu Rong. Uh, Zhurong's wheel, uh, but uh, uh, it's not the final version. Um, actually, this study is uh, cooperated with the Beijing Institute of Spacecraft System Engineering, which is the design institute of Zhurong. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, Dr. Wang. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thanks for your report. I noticed that there is a displacement motion during radio deformation. What's the reason of this phenomenon? Uh, I think uh, you referring the top two fingers. Uh, yes. It's a good question. Uh, I think uh, it is worth uh, mentioning that uh, when the force of the wheel spokes reach the, a certain uh, threshold value, deformation mutation occurred. Mm, it is speculated that the sudden chance, chance, change of this displacement may be caused by the deformation of the spokes. The deformation of the spokes can be recovered after the load is removed. Okay, thank you for your explanation. Thank you. Does anyone has any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zhengyi Wang. And have you given me the screen? Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks for the excellent presentations. And this year's conference, the 11th Asia Pacific Region Conference, will be held by Harbin Institute of Technology, Jilin University, the Southern University of Science and Technology, China Academy of Space Technology, and so on. And we are calling for papers right now. The abstract submission time is before 15 May, and the timeline may extend, expand to 13 May. And it is necessary to submit the abstract before uh, submitting the full paper. And here is the uh, WeChat group of the conference. Since the scale of the group has been over 2,000 people. And uh, you can add Zheng Yin Wang's WeChat. Here is his QR code. And he will invite you to the conference, conference group. And I will be translated in Chinese. Uh,今年的这个,呃,国际汽车地面力学协会呢,就是会议,它会在中国会在国内举行。呃在大概王志燕博士的这个好友然后他会邀请大家进入会议 uh, That's all I have to say Thanks for all the participants and uh, hope to see you soon at the conference Thank you Thanks again uh, Dr. Yang uh, Okay Yeah, yeah uh, may, may we have a uh, uh... A screenshot of the atten attendees. Uh, uh, how to operate that? Uh, you you can stop the screen share. Wait a minute.
Okay, thank you. Okay, I have done. Okay, uh, thanks everyone, and we hope to see you soon.